Hi, and thanks for joining the SJ Child Show. Today, I am speaking with Daniel, and I've been excited to have this conversation. I know that he's been waiting to come on and um, for us to be able to talk to, so it's going to be something we're both engaged and really um, here to share stories and and help um, really uh, understand how we can support all communities. And I think that's really done in education and and not just like school education, but through telling stories that people can hear what's worked and what hasn't, especially what hasn't. I think that's really valuable for people to understand how they can better adjust their lives to do so. So thanks for joining me today. Thank you. Yeah. Well, give us an introduction. Tell us about yourself and, you know, where you're at in the world. Daniel Duraney. I'm a public speaker and advocate in the autism field from Texas. Um, I speak on a variety of subjects in the autism field when I do public presentations all over the country. I do employment, transition into adulthood social skills, dating relationships. Wonderful. Well, and let's talk about maybe how it all started for you. What was your passion to get into being a speaker? Were you inspired by someone in particular? I got very fortunate to go speak. Uh, One day I was helping out with a, a support group back home and they had a conference and I was invited to speak and I did so well on this, on my speaking that people wanted to hear me each that. time. So I had connections and each time I've built upon that to get to where I want to be. And you said the key word there connections. It's so important. And especially I think when we're aligning people's speech, the in speaking to the audience and really what they want to hear and what they want to know about. And, you know, it, it's exciting that we have so many up and coming advocates being able to tell their stories and really have it be so meaningful and valuable for so many families across the world, right? Just on this global level. Where, when you were growing up, what like when were you diagnosed and what did that look like that process for you or maybe even when you first came to understand it i wasn't diagnosed until i was age 25 okay so you were a late diagnosis as well so i was a late diagnosis i didn't even hear about the word autism until i was 21 when i was at a doctor's office And I got to a point I was losing jobs and couldn't hold on to it. And I realized something is not right and I need to get help. So I went through a government agency back home. They gave me a clinical psychologist. I got tested. I found out my condition and I tried to study my condition and be a student of the condition as much as possible, not just for myself, but for other people around me. Yeah. Wow. And that takes so much like inner um, strength and vulnerability to share that and to really go and do that kind of research for yourself. Um, You know, I did it for my child and then come to find out, of course, years and years and years later, um, did it for myself for several months, (laughs) that, that inner introspective research and going back and kind of uncovering things when you are now looking for work what kind of things have you might learned to help accommodate yourself i've learned to understand that everybody's got an answer to a boss in the work world no matter what job they're doing i've learned how to cope with people who are difficult i've learned how to find some mentors who who have helped me along the way in the job world 
along the way. Those are some things that come into mind for in the job world of equip me. Yeah, I love that too. Mentors are important. And now, I mean, really, when you look at it, you're also becoming a mentor and just paying it forward, if you will, in that sense. And congratulations on that. And yeah, I think it's so exciting that these growths, you know, we can build upon. And especially when it's this passion about understanding how we can better society in general. I think that's important. What are some of your goals for the future? I would love to speak to, in all 50 states as a public speaker. I would love to reach out to the 20 education service centers that we have in the state of Texas. Those are some things I want to go international. And then in my other job as a referee, I want to get to be a division one softball umpire at the college level and grow in my craft as a referee and in, in other sports as well. Oh, it, that's cool. Can we talk about that a little bit? Tell us about that, about being a referee. And that sounds like that might be kind of another passion that you, that you have. Absolutely. Uh, when did your love of sports start? My love of sports started when I was eight years old. I wanted to get into broadcasting and then and then I wanted to go get into sports like research, like sports statistical research. So I got interviewed by ESPN many years ago. Oh. I didn't get the job, which was disappointing. But then I tried to get into the pro and college level with sports and I was getting I just didn't get to where I wanted to be. Mm -hmm. And fortunately, somebody gave me an opportunity to referee and I've learned to go from there as a referee and I fell in love with it. I it's a great that. avocation. It's a great side hustle to do. It's hard to make a living on it unless you're a professional at it. Yeah. But it's great connections at the same time. Mm -hmm. And I've learned how to, it's helped me in my, in my full-time job when I worked in, in other jobs in the past, being a referee, learning how to work with other people, learning how to work as a team, fi work, find a common goal. Yeah. That's what's taught me a lot. And it's given me a lot of confidence as a person. I love that for you. I, that's fantastic. And it's still being able to kind of hone in that sports um, broadcasters, you know, if you will, like being able to just say what you want to say about it. And as a referee, you get that chance, you know, to be able to do that. Uh, my stepfather that is past, but he was an umpire for so many years. And at the end of his life, he was a cancer survivor, or excuse me, not uh, at the beginning, they had given him like a make a wish thing. And he went to New York and was an honorary umpire and got to like, do all kinds of things and, you know, got a neat jersey and everything and went on ESPN. That was where I was going with that <laughs> um, to be able to, you know, do an interview too. But just being like, thinking back to watching him in that same way that you're speaking about it, like have camaraderie and have these different um, connections with these, you know, different affiliations and really just put his love of softball and, and baseball into action where he couldn't play anymore, but he could certainly like enjoy the game. So I love that you get to do that. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. So what other kinds of interests or hobbies do you like to do like at home? Do you like to go out or you're more of a stay in? I'm really busy with officiating, but outside of officiating and speaking, I like to play this game called backgammon. Oh, yeah. It's really intriguing. It's a Middle Eastern game. 
And if I had more time in my day, I would try to join tournaments if I could and see how I compete against other people. Cause I play the game all the time with my wife. That's great. So tell us about being in a relationship and what that has looked like. How, how old were you when you, you know, were you already diagnosed? Was that something you guys talked about? What did that look like? My first relationship wasn't until I was in my mid twenties after I got diagnosed. I dated somebody for a year and a half and I did not have the support from her family. And I felt it was not a battle to fight. So I broke it off and cut the cords basically. Good for you. And then I met my wife through a dating website. And we dated for two and a half years before we got married. We got married on May 16th, 2015. So we've been married for over eight years. Well, congratulations. We have a son who's three. And it's I've learned a lot. I've I've the thing I have learned about it being in a relationship, you will bend over backwards more for that person than you will with any other person you're around. Yeah. And there is so much give and take along the way. So that is what I've learned in, in being in a relationship more than anything else. Yeah, I agree. I dated my husband for, well, we were friends for about six months before we knew that we thought we might like each other. So then we, it was lovely because we'd already gotten to know each other so well. And then we've been together ever since, and it'll be 19 years on September 13th. (laughs) So, (laughs) and I, in the last decade, come to find out that we're both autistic and you know, our children. And so it's been this like really fulfilling, um, endearing, like caring system that we have for each other and for our kids and for one another to try to help really support how everybody learns best, processes information the best. Like we're really open now to understanding all of that through all of this learning, um, which, you know, is giving them, I think a real step up from kind of what, how we were raised and not knowing the same for you, you know, in the, in that, how many struggles that you kind of went back and thought, Oh my gosh, if I only would have known, like I could have found some support for this, this or that. And, but at the same time, it's great that we've come so far and have had so many achievements and overcome so much. Um, and it's the like this fine line you want to keep your kids to be resilient, yet give them the right combinations that are they're deserving. And you'll come to find that out as yours is only three. <laughs> mm-hmm. How do you, what do you think about parenting? What do you... Uh, is it everything did you want to be a dad i've always wanted to be a dad i've enjoyed it oh. my son gives me pure joy it's, oh i love that yeah he gives me pure joy great age i love to watch them when they're like observing and figuring things out and they're so curious aren't they oh yes i love learning about him and learning about his strengths his weaknesses yeah just learning what he does well in what he doesn't do well in and as I he gets older one. yeah as and as he grows it'll be those things that you'll be able to kind of draw from and that information you're gaining to help build challenges or things, you know, with those strengths, just like, you know, is best done through, through those practices. 
finding those strengths and building upon them. And that's so exciting. So we were talking about you doing like sports broadcasting. Is that still something you want to do if you had a chance to do it in the future? My focus is on refereeing and public speaking and getting to the goals I want to get to as a referee. Good. I would love to do the College World Series for softball as an example. It's, are there and, programs that you like apply for to get to for that? Or how does that work? Do you just need to know the right people? There's camps and clinics um, along the way. There's there's trainings, there's meetings. Do we go to as a as as I'm part of a high school chapter as well? We go to meetings, and we learn a lot. And there's along the way there's connections to make, and hmm. and that's what you have to do. Uh, sometimes having a big boy job takes over that, and that can <laughs> add, that can that can that can. That can stunt the process and that's sometimes more important than that but that's what it takes to get to where you want to where I want to be yeah absolutely do you have a lot of support from your family there in Texas still I do I do in Texas I do my parents are living and my parents are supportive of my dreams on that and my wife is but we're also realistic of what's got to what's got to come first, and that's paying the bills, <laughs> right? <along laughs> Isn't the that the truth? And yeah. that's that's and that's that's the most important part of it right now. Um, yeah. Well, and hopefully, some great opportunities, you know, can open up for you uh, the more and more that you share about advocacy and especially, you know, reaching out to some of those organizations and things and finding those maybe ambassadorships. I think that that's a really neat process that is available for people to, to become part of. And I see so much success for the people that, you know, get to, to be a part of that, but also just, um, really showing up in the world and talking about the things like you said, relationships and work transitions and understanding how to better communicate with people or better understand that there's always a boss. I love that you said that because that's something really realistic that sometimes we might not take into consideration, especially when we're first entering the work field or transitioning to new things. So if that's really valuable information, what other kind of advice do you have or would you like to share so that, you know, you, the kind of change you would like to see? My advice, especially when it comes to transition into adulthood, is Getting early intervention is important. Starting the process of transition into adulthood, not waiting until you're 14 or 16 or 18, but starting early at like six when they immediately get a diagnosis is important to to smoothly transition into adulthood. Um, When they're in college, when folks are on the spectrum on the college, don't expect colleges to teach you everything, Mm. but look into the disability centers and the career service centers as your resources to get to where you want to be while in college and while you transition out of college. Um, Kobe Bryant, he's a famous basketball player. He talks about the people talk about him as the Mamba mentality, having the mentality to get back up, be resilient in what you want to do, pushing forward, learning from each situation, learning how to fail forward in life. Those are things that come into mind as as some advice as I give to to parents and folks on the spectrum as as well as teachers along the way. Mm. Um, As for 
what colleges could teach a little bit better in when they go into adulthood, um, how to handle being fired, how to mm-hmm. handle losing a job, being let go, uh, how to properly counter offer when you're in the job world, when they're, you're given an offer, how to properly counter offer, and how to properly ask for a raise while you're in the job. Mm-hmm. I think those are some things that colleges can do better in teaching in that phase. I think at the high school level, talking about finances, Mm -hmm. teaching finances to class and in those classrooms, getting the state legislatures to buy into that because they really dictate what the graduation, what the classes that a child needs to have to graduate high school. So getting the state legislatures involved in that. Um, I would like to see, I know it's a hot topic, but ABA getting it mandatory in the, in the schools because the parents don't have the finances to fork thousands of dollars, even with insurance to get them, to get them, to get them involved in it. Those are uh, insurance help increasing the health insurance to being under their parents' insurance at the age of 30 Mm -hmm. instead of 26, because not many of them are supporting themselves. Yeah. Those are a lot of things that come into mind and giving advice and pointers and tips along the way. I mean, those are really valuable, valuable points and information. I'm even going to go back and write some of this down and make sure that I have these uh, references to draw from for other people. I appreciate this so much, actually. Um, it's I love podcasting in the sense that I can always uh, know that I'll learn so much from a new person that I'm meeting and take have so much to take away and, you know, just teach others. And it's such a great experience. And I'm really glad that we finally were able to connect and um, make this happen. It, do you have a website or social media that you want people to connect with you on? I'm on Facebook. I'm on Twitter. Um, I have a website of dsdautism.org. Mm-hmm. It's got a clip of one of my presentations as well as a little bit about me as a person and my family along the way so those are some things to follow me on and check up on what i'm doing i'm mostly on facebook i'm always giving key stuff on facebook and so catch on what i'm doing every day i love that i think it's so great that you're really helping uh the community out so much and providing all of this really wonderful, valuable, and insightful advice and tips. And there's so much um, that can and should be done. And hopefully we can, you know, have enough same ideas that we can get some change occurring in the future for, for everyone to come. It's been such a pleasure to talk to you today and get to know you and Of course, we're connected on Facebook, so we'll be following each other's journeys and and everything and staying in touch. So thank you so much for coming today, Daniel. You're welcome. Yeah, I'm excited that we got to do this and we'll definitely be in touch. Absolutely. Thank you.